All right. Good morning, everybody. A uh, little bit of technical difficulties here, I guess, getting everything set up. But thank you all for being here, and also thank you uh, for letting me be one of the first few talks today. Um, planning to talk to you a little bit about the liquid cooling cart and all the design work that we've been doing at Meta um, in designing it, along with our AALC racks. My name is Jared Wyatt. I'm a mechanical engineer at Meta and also the lead designer for the cart. I also was supposed to have my partner, Stephanie, here, who's a project manager for the program. But unfortunately, she had to go to the hospital and is luckily feeling better today. Um, and she's recovering and resting, but couldn't make it. All right, so in order to talk about the LC cart, we have to talk a little bit about the background for the development of the cart as well. Uh, previously, uh, liquid cooling was something that scared people when you talked about entering it into the data center. I think this was one of the main reasons why we had to design and develop not only our AALCs, but also the LC cart to manage it. So our ALC rack is meant for our type one data centers, and these data centers don't have access to facility water, so that means that you don't have any plumbing or anything in our data centers. In order to introduce liquid-cooled IT gear into our data center, we needed to have the ALC rack so that you could put it adjacent to a liquid-cooled IT gear and supply that liquid that's not available in the facility to the, car to the rack itself. Now, in developing the cart, we needed this cart in order to manage the fluid inside of this rack. There are a few functions that we needed to have primarily in order to enable this. This is system fill and top off, which is putting liquid into the rack, system drain, which is removing fluid from the rack, and then some kind of purge that you can get majority of the fluid out of the rack itself. Now there are a few of these fluid operations we should talk about, and I'll go through them each one by one. First, we have pre-charge. Now, pre-charge is needed to put fluid from a fluid drum into the cart itself. You need to use your pre-charge hose and then also your common hose to be able to fill it into the new fluid reservoir in the cart. Next, we have our full fill. This full fill is to fill up an ALC rack that doesn't have any fluid in it whatsoever. You can also do small operations like top off where you can add a few liters, like maybe three, five liters of fluid to the rack as well. You would use your top off hose or your common hose to get this done. We have full drain, which is the exact opposite of full fill. If you want to be able to drain all the fluid out of the rack, you would also use the common hose, and you can either connect to the rear of the RPU, which is at the bottom of the rack, or to the front of the RPU through the full fill drain port. And then finally, we have air purge, where you add just compressed air to the full drain operation to make sure as much fluid as possible is removed from the rack. Now, we have a video here that can show some of the basic functions of the cart as well as some of the major details. Um, so I'll uh, give this a go now. I think maybe the audio is not working so well. So I'll try to speak to it while the video shows. So this video is taken in our lab that we have in Menlo Park to show off some of the details of the cart. You can see some of the different fluid ports on the side. And this is our operating panel, where you have your touch screen for controlling it, alarm, power button, buzzer, and then emergency stop in case you see something that shouldn't happen. What you have in the bottom there is our fluid cabinet, which has all the reservoirs for the cart as well. You have leak detection, which is in the cart, so if there's any spill inside of the cart, it alerts the user and also will stop function of the pumps. We have ESD casters and some handles for ease of use. That way you can maneuver the cart throughout the data center. And we have a UPS, which is a battery that allows for either plugging the power in, um, receiving power from the wall, or just using it as a battery to operate the cart throughout the data hall. It's one kilovolt. We have two cabinets, the top and the bottom. One is just for storage, and the other is for our auxiliary hoses that are being shown here. All of these hoses enable the different operations that I mentioned earlier on the cart, as well as an exhaust kit and bung wrench, which are used to either open the fluid drum and then also to exhaust any air that's in the ALC rack. If you look inside of the fluid cabinet, you can see the two reservoirs we have in there, both the new and the used, the new on the left, and then used is on the right. We have these two separated so that you can avoid contamination of the fluid inside of the cart that is taken from a rack. So if a rack has been running for a while and there might be any pollutants inside of that coolant, it would go into the used fluid. And if you're filling a rack for the first time, you take the fluid from the fluid drum and fill it right into the rack. 
We also have a filter, um, 25 microns, a pressure reducer, uh, check valves, solenoid valves, and a few other parts that can be used as well. The image here shows the compressed air um, uh, pump, which is how you get that compressed air into the rack when you're doing a full drain. You can see a close-up of the HMI here, which has all the fluid functions. And so you can press any of the buttons. Um, first, the operation. Then you press start-stop. You have to make this confirmation. And then you can begin whatever operation you're looking to perform. The UPS also allows you to do about 17 uh, top-off operations. So if you need to land racks and they don't come full, you can also do that as well. Now, I'll stop the video here because we talk a little bit about our documentation. And then I can go over to the... Next slide. So just to recap some of the things we saw in that video, I can show some of the different items uh, on the cart here from some of these pictures. So you can see our operating panel, which is where you have your HMI and all of the different indications you need for the cart. So you'd have your error logs and error indications that come on that operating panel. You have your small cabinet for any you know small items. Maybe uh, you want to put PPE or something in there. So you can take that throughout the data center. You have your large cabinet, which is for all of the auxiliary hoses. You have your UPS, which is battery and power supply. You have your new fluid and used fluid reservoir, which separate the different fluids to avoid contamination. You have your ESD casters to avoid static buildup when you're moving the cart to the data center. Your air compressor so that you can fully drain the, the rack. You have your drain port, which is needed to drain the reservoirs from the cart. Now, if you do have fluid in there, for example, you fill an entire A, you drain an entire ALC rack, you're now going to have a full reservoir. In order to get that out, you can use the drain port, either attach it to a hose that then just drains into a bucket on the floor, or you could attach a pump and have it directly put into a um, container for shipping and removal. Then finally, we have our fluid pump as well, which is used to do all of the pump operations. Now, in order to conduct all these different fluid operations, we have a few different ports on the side of the cart. At the very top, we have the exhaust kit drain. Now, I didn't talk about this part too much in detail, but the exhaust kit is used to bleed out any air inside of the RPU when you're doing fill or drain operations. And this port allows you to drain any fluid that might get caught inside of that port. We also have the top off and fill port, which connects to the fluid line that sends all the fluid out of the cart into the rack. We have air purge, which is where you attach the hose for compressed air. And then we have the drain and precharge uh, hose, which you connect to do any drain operations or basically putting any fluid from outside of the cart into the cart. Now, you can see all of the different hoses here. And it's important to note all of these hoses because that's where there's room for flexibility on the cart. Depending on the application or if there's a different type of rack, if there's different types of um, QDs that are being used on the system, etc., you can just develop another auxiliary hose and enable the cart to do its pumping functions there. So whether that be for L10s, um, different kind of racks, or other uh, uh, fluid-filled parts in your data center facility. Now, some of the learnings that we've had in developing of the LC cart have to do with PPE, some of the user interface, QDs, et cetera. And we've been using the cart mainly to land some of our MPI racks for evaluation in our data center. As you can see some pictures um, on the right there. Now, for PPE, we realize, and you can see in the image as well, initially face shields were used as people were afraid that there might be high pressure fluid that's very hot that might come out of the rack or the cart. But we quickly learned that that's not a concern that we are too worried about, and also that the pressure on these systems are relatively low. For the user interface, we wanted to give as much information as possible to the data center technicians who are using it. So we added a few different options, like the amount of fluid added, the racks left that you can top off using the cart, cart pump pressure, and different details like that. And then finally, we have QDs. Uh, previously, we were using CGB20 QDs, and we switched to LQC for not only our supply chain, but also standardization for all of the QDs that we use in our data center and on our equipment. Now, there are some challenges that we faced when developing this cart, some having to do with dealing with um, you know, our suppliers and working with a product that's the first of its kind. And so a lot of innovation was required here, a lot of trial and error. But I'm happy to say that we've gotten to a very stable place where we have consistent functionality of the cart and that operates well. 
We also have flexibility enabled, so we're able to work with various um, different ALC racks from different suppliers and different equipment in our data centers. Additionally, we have our compliance and regulation set for both North America and then the EU as well, so that we can have the cart available in our global data centers. We also have operational alignment with all of our data centers. Since we have a global team and each team might have different perspectives, it took a little bit of time to coordinate and get all of this feedback implemented, but I think we've been able to do a pretty good job thus far. Now to talk about some of our wins and successes. Um, compatibility and efficiency is one of the major items that we are focused on, making sure that we could use the cart with as many different options as possible and enable flexibility for the future. Serviceability was also one of our main concerns, where we wanted to make sure we had a robust RMA process so that we were able to manage the carts if they get damaged, as we want to avoid any technicians changing the cart um, and basically repairing it in the data center. We also made sure we have simple and easily accessible frues, so if you want to change the hoses or you want to change a leak cable, it's fairly easy to do that. Finally, ease of use was one of the primary functions of the cart or in, in the design process. We wanted to make sure it was easy for people to operate it, to just basically pick it up and start using it without too much training, even though significant training will be provided. We also have user manuals, and the video you saw earlier is a training video. Unfortunately, the audio wasn't there, so you couldn't hear the narration, but it was very good, trust me. All right, so uh, final item I have here is our call to action. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the talks today, you know, you do have the cold plate subproject group where we will be presenting the cart um, occasionally as well. So we ask you that you get involved in the cooling environments track in whichever way is uh, necessary. And we also want to share the LC cart will be shared to OCP as a specification by the end of this year. So if you want to review the design or potentially purchase it from our part partner Delta, you can do that. And then finally, um, if you have any questions or you'd like to see more about the cart, we do have it in the Innovation Village with an AALC rack next to it. So you can see how it works, come talk to me, ask questions and all of that. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, now would be the perfect time. And thank you for listening. So um, we were talking about, the, of course, the AALC, which uses an RPU. But as a CDU or any other uh, device, that would stay still, and that would you know, do all the pumping. And the LC cart only manages the fluid in it. So then you can add to it or remove it. Um, in our data centers, for example, you know they're very, very large. So if you don't have access to a sink or anything, there's no way you can manage that fluid anywhere near the rack itself. So the cart essentially brings the fluid to where you have to service it. Absolutely. Can you, uh, could you come up to the mic? If you have a question, could you come up to, could you come up to the mic right here? Right here, right here. Yeah. I think I also heard of when he said, uh, the capa what is the capacity of the cart? Um, there's two reservoirs, and both reservoirs have 60 liters worth of fluid in it. So you can store up to 120 liters, but generally you want to remain, leave them separated from new and used fluid. So 60 liters, uh, generally. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh, one more. Hey, Jared, I assume this is for PG-25 coolant, right? We do use PG-25, yes. Do you swap to treat the water if you decide to change? So we don't currently have that as a plan, but I don't see why you couldn't use treated water um, for the system as well. So uh, it's a no simple fluid pump. So issue with all the connector, right? I'm sorry? The connection species, the pieces, there's no material compatibility issue if you switch coolant. I don't believe so for treated water. Right? We haven't been using that as a, you know any of our testing. We haven't used facility water. Um, or treated water rather. But since we use stainless steel, copper, and EPDM, we would just recommend that any material is uh, a wetted material that's allowed for that fluid that you're using for your operation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 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 So does the cart auto bleed any air out of the system? 
So we have an exhaust kit that's available. So auto might not be the right word for it, but once you attach the exhaust kit, it does automatically bleed through that exhaust kit. Yes. All right, thank you.